thank you everybody for joining today's session. Um, and my name is Juanita. Um, I work for the Spina Bifida Association. I'm with the National Resource Center. And with that, I'm very excited to go ahead and um, turn it over to Elizabeth, who is um, our who is our moderator for this session. And go ahead, Elizabeth. Thanks, Juanita. Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Scriven. I'm a licensed psychologist in the state of Washington. Um, my day job, I work at a methadone clinic and I provide clinical supervision to staff and support clients who are trying to find mental health recovery. Um, I've been in the, um, the mental health field for over 11 years. Um, and then on the, um, on like my non-day job job, um, I do a lot of projects with um, the Spina Bifida Association. I also do some other advocacy and outreach work. So I am glad to be here tonight. And then I think next is Adam. Yes, Adam Seal Scott. Hey guys, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, yes, my name is Adam Seal Scott. Um, 34 years old, been in a wheelchair uh, for 34 years. Uh, my day job is I'm an auditor in insurance, which is just as exciting as it sounds. Um, non day job, as you guys can see from my little bio here um like to travel i've actually hit about 40 states in the last two years um so i've seen seen a lot of cool places lately and i do a lot of photography uh for fun on the side um uh, and then when i'm around family and friends love to spend time with them as well i think jay is next on the list awesome awesome thank you, adam so uh, my name is jay dachevsky i am 42 years young i hope to stay young um, and let's see, um, I'm from, um, Arizona, so, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, but I work in Tempe, Arizona. I work at Arizona State University, um, at the TRIO Student Support Services. So, um, it's a really awesome job. It's my alma mater. So I'm uh, really glad to, to do it. And, um, as my non-day job, um, I volunteer within the Spine Rifted Community. So with the Spine Rifted Association of Arizona, Spine Rifted Association National, um, I, I really enjoy keeping active uh, with everybody. Um, you're all awesome. So um, hope you enjoy tonight. Hi, everybody. My name is Jenny Moots, and I am currently an academic advisor with the Heinz College of Architecture and Design at the University of Houston, um, where I reside. Um, and I am a person with spina bifida. Um, I've worked in advocacy as well for many years. Um, I recently moved to Texas. Well, I've been in Texas for a while, but I recently moved to the Houston area. And so I'm just starting to get um, connected to different uh, networks here and hope to um, continue doing more advocacy in the city of Houston. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Oops, can you go? There you go. Um, and again, I should say that we all have spina bifida. We all are, are adults here who identify as having spina bifida. Um, so anyway... So we're here to talk tonight about how to fill our glass and keep ourselves rejuvenated, especially during the holiday season. But really these are tips and tricks um, for all year round. So we started with the holidays because the holidays can be difficult. Y'all, what comes up for you about around the holidays and what makes them difficult sometimes? Well, I know for me, um, I live away from family. So I live here in Texas and my dad lives in Arizona and I have extended family in Washington state and my sister lives in Colorado. So we're all over the place. Um, so sometimes that can be difficult just trying to get together with everyone and, and see everyone during the holidays. doesn't always happen. And I think, yeah, too, and, oh, oh, sorry. go ahead, Jay. Um, go ahead. And I think too, you know, like with 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 the whole like um, family being dispersed all over the place, that that does make it hard. Um, I definitely, uh, what you see on this current slide um, is totally relevant. You know, there, there's the fear of missing out. There's you know social media. So like, what are the expectations? And really, are there any expectations? Because if if you're you know seeing um, what everybody else is doing, but then again, you want to really focus on making your own holiday the. Uh, the, the absolute best it, it can be so you know but um that is hard you know like just to see you know how can I make it different than last year how can I make it better how, how can I be at my best and then uh, go ahead Adam 
Yeah, I'm just going to kind of piggyback off of that as well. Um, as far as as far as family, I'm from a very small town in Ohio. I have a twin brother and older sister. Between the two of them, they have eight kids. Um, so I have eight nieces and nephews that I don't really get to see too much. I actually haven't lived back in my hometown since I was 18 years old. So it does get hard uh, definitely around the holidays because, you know, we have Christmas parties and family get togethers. And I do uh, make a point to absolutely attend those when I can. Um, so those can be those can be difficult things, though. I think it, for me personally, it's important to. Uh, we have FaceTime, right? You have phone calls, you, you stay in the loop with social media, um, seeing what all the kids are up to, right? Using the tools that we have to stay connected as much as possible. Because I think around the holidays, that's one of the hardest things, um, you know, with for people with spina bifida and for, for everyone, right? Holidays can be difficult for everybody. Um, so it's just really about using the tools that you can uh, to mitigate that as much as possible. Thank you all. Next slide, please. So we talked a little bit already. You guys mentioned fear of missing out in social media um, in your comments to the first slide. But can, let's expand on that. Tell me a little bit more about um, what 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 is the fear of missing out about? How does social media, Adam, you mentioned how it helps. Jay, you, you mentioned how it can be detrimental. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I can, I can go ahead and pick up on that as well. Um, so as far as social media, right, it's a double-edged sword uh, because you 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 have this instant ability to communicate with virtually everybody, right? Everyone you know, um, everyone that you don't, you don't know, you know, somebody you can just meet uh, on the fly. And then on the flip side of that, yeah, you do see, you know, you see what people post, you see get-togethers, you see cool places that people are visiting. Um, and around the holidays when we're, you know, we get snowed in or we physically, you know, can't get out. I don't, I hate getting stuck in the snow in my wheelchair, for example. Um, so yeah, when we sit inside and we see these things, it can have an absolute, you know, a, a negative impact on your mental health. Um, I think the important thing for me anyways, is to remember that, and it, we have it right here as well as, you know, people are posting things um, to, you know, make things look as good as possible. And every, everyone is struggling. This is, every single person has has their own struggles. Those things aren't necessarily posted uh, on social media. So for me, again, it's, it's a reminder of, you know, if you are struggling, you're not alone in that. Um, and it's, it's important to remember that when you're, you know, scrolling through the socials. Thanks, Adam. Jay or Jenny? Um, definitely, I I I could um, I piggyback on what Adam said too, and 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 also it's on the slide too because like social media, like you are hiding behind sort of a little facade, um, sort of, um, in terms of like like um, you know what, um, how do you want to like make things look better than than they might might be, um, so there's kind of like an air of of I guess competition, but but also like with social media, it 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 is lots of texts. Um, you don't really um communicate your your um your tone of voice say or or your whether it's excitement or or sadness or any feelings they don't communicate as well um through that text so i mean like somebody could write um accomplishments and then then like they could be met with um honest genuine um support or they could be met with sort of like an ableist uh, dismissive response of Oh, that's cute, you know. Um, as in, you know, they don't really think we're capable of doing what we do, but we do it anyways because because we are capable. So, I mean, um, I think that the fear that you can't keep up is is definitely relevant because we're seeing what everybody posts. But then I think that we really have to fall back on, you know, um, what what we're doing to contribute because we are worthy contributors. We 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 do worthy contributions. Um. You know, um, and and I think you know to to utilize social media to the best of your ability, you just have to realize that you, you can only do what you can do. You're doing the best you can. People do know this; they appreciate this. Um, and if they don't, then there's no need for for that for like any um, animosity or any like rivalry of sorts. It's certainly not something that you're trying to um, promote either.
I think for me too, I was just going to add, um, I try to be really intentional with social media. Like if I'm going to post something, I know it's going to be seen by however many followers I have, or for, you know, people that are paying attention to my pages. And so I try to, you know, have a healthy balance. Um, I've gotten really big into like doing group texting with like my close friends and family. And I usually share stuff there first. And then, you know, if it's like well-received or I get good feedback, then I'll um, post it out wider on social media. Um, but I try to try to keep a little bit for myself. You know, I, I don't want everybody to know everything about me. And so I think, you know, it's just finding that right balance and just doing it um, because it's fun, but, you know, not taking it too um, seriously, too. And I think I was just going to add one additional thing here as well, as far as the, the bullet point for, you know, find ways to use it positively. I, I think that's the most important part. Um, you know, if you, you see things that people are doing or things that people are talking about or posting pictures, you know, if that's something that you want, if, if you are, you know, like to be engaged on social media, don't be afraid to to share things positive in your life, whatever, whatever that is, you know, if you you know, are really into crocheting and you just crocheted this awesome penguin, you know, share that people, people enjoy that. And also you're using, you're using social media in the way, kind of the way it was intended, which is to share with your, your friends and family. Um, instead of, you know, again, just going the other way with it and, and looking at a screen um, and feeling a certain way, a negative way about yourself. So. Yeah. Thank you all. And I just want to add that I know a lot of people that don't have spina bifida or disability who can't keep up with the pace of the holidays either. Um, the holidays can be a mad dash um, to, to, I don't know what, right? Like what happens after the, the holidays with the great letdown, right? So, you know, sometimes just taking it slow. I love puzzle. Like I, I, I'm not a big puzzle person, but puzzles when I'm snowed in the house, I'm, I too am a, am a wheelchair user. And I live in, in Washington where we don't handle snow real well. We're not usually real, real prepared for it. And so I get snowed in. And, and so having a puzzle, having a good book, having a good video game, having something to, to occupy your time. Um, and that maybe is a, more of a solitude kind of activity. And taking that time to be quiet and be still can also be really important. Next slide, please. So managing expectations, it's about kind of knowing what your limits are, knowing what you're interested in and kind of managing what you're hoping for out of the holiday um, season um, so that there isn't that great disappointment at the end of it. How do you guys manage that? Jenny, you wanna go ahead and start tonight sure. with this one? So, you know, absolutely managing your expectations is essential anytime, you know, that there's a big holiday or, um, you know, exciting time coming up on the calendar and, and really taking an a inventory of what's the most important thing. And um, I like what you said, Elizabeth, about, you know, maybe just taking some time in solitude and just really thinking about what my priorities are, or what I really want to get out of you know, the holidays or whatever. Um, and just kind of being more introspective in that, like think about, you know, what I, what I'm, I tend to lean toward gratitude. So I'll just, I'll journal and I'll write down the things that I'm like grateful for. And, you know, maybe I don't have all the money or all the ability to go do all the activities and things, but there's lots of things to be grateful for. And so I, I try to, um, during, especially during the holidays, I try to just reflect on the things that I do have instead of the things that I don't have. Thank you. Adam J. Yeah, I was just going to pick up, I, I'm watching the chat as well. And Lisa said, learning a new skill or cooking techniques. And that's kind of exactly where my mind goes as well is like, finding things that bring you joy right and that's not specific to this group of four of us you know it's not specific to this entire spina bifida group on this call right now it's, it's everybody right it's finding things that bring you joy and that can absolutely be difficult around the holidays but that's also 12 months out of the year so i, I think it's really 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 important just to to find things you know for instead of going the other way with it of things that we don't have right i can't walk but i can play guitar 
you know, like it, it, that's, that's kind of the mindset that you have to put yourself into. Um, and you know what, if, if the thing that you can do, you're, you're over it, find something new, you know, that's, that's the beauty of it. There's an endless, li an endless list of things we can participate in groups, you know, hobbies, activities, talents. Um, you know, it, it's, it's easy, to, easy to get complacent. Um, but it's important not to when you're feeling that way. Definitely. And I could, I'm um, sorry, um, that's my uh, landline. Um, um, but, you know, I, I could also um, relate as, as that's a really great segue, um, because I mean, like we, we do have our own um, skills, our own traits that, you know, either A, they align with people who maybe they don't have something with us, such as playing guitar. Um, and I might also play guitar too, so I could totally relate. Um, I'm not really great at it, but I like to dabble around. But, but I mean, um, yes, you know, I, I think when it comes to the holidays, you might think of like um, gathering around the table, and 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 I think like from a, from like a metaphorical sense, you think of what you bring to the table. Everybody brings different things to the table, and um, somebody asked in the Q and A, so so like what is ableism, and and like like an ableist uh, dismissive response to what we all bring to the table, uh, for example, would would be oh oh that's cute because we're we're thought of as kind of like little kind of like kind of um less than so like ableism is is more like you have a uh, response that um diminishes uh, people with disabilities it, it, it's kind of an anti-disability response to, to put it in like a like a really brief description and um what i would say like like in terms of many expectations is like um have your own expectations um you do things that quite possibly nobody else has ever done and you have that potential to teach people how to do it and then they can spread the word and spread the word and spread the word um and like in terms of like a budget um you could always create your own you know you know like take take pride in what you bring take pride in what you do um it doesn't have to be like everybody else as we've as we've explored there's no one size fits all um, and there, there never was, um, there never will be. Everybody is unique. So, I mean, like bring your own stamp, your own personal um, creativity, because everybody has those. Thank you all. And when you're thinking about a budget too, there's so many free activities in the holiday season from craft bazaars and holiday fairs. The casino near my house decorates like all over with all sorts of lights and it's completely free to go walk around. So I, my favorite search tool all year round really anymore is Googling free things to do in my zip code. And I can almost always find a new park to explore some sort of craft event going on, um, all sorts of things. Um, so if, if money is a, con is a constraining factor for you, look for the free things. Um, and connecting with family is often free. So there's always that family and friends. Um, next, please. Planning ahead. So one of the issues that I think many people have is all of a sudden they have some free time or all of a sudden it's almost Thanksgiving or all of a sudden it's almost the day. And we're kind of left with a sense of scrambling. So what are some steps that you guys take to help yourselves plan ahead and kind of prepare for the holiday or prepare for the event rather than, oh my gosh, it's it's here. What do I do now? Um, this I really like because I mean, this, this could allow you to really show yourself how to be resourceful and also show others how to be um, resourceful too. One of the things that I always emphasize it, is it's all about community. It's all about like like where you are, uh, for example, uh, where you live, what re um, resources you have access to. And if you don't, what what really can you find that is new? So so I mean, um, uh, look around, you know, definitely see what what is uh, going on um, in your neighborhood or or in like a nearby neighborhood too. Um, you know, um, network with with friends, network with colleagues, network with with family. Um, um, create create new ideas. You know, um, because you know, brainstorming is is always key, and like that that would really bring a lot. Um, 
to the whole holiday um, holiday experience. It uh, doesn't matter what sort of brainstorming, doesn't matter what sort of activities, just um, keep your options all open. Um, that 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 re is really what counts. And and it really doesn't matter if it's like small or big, um, just, you know, um, allow people to be invested in your communities too, just as, just as passionate and as invested as you are as well. I think for me, um, planning ahead, because I do live away from family, there's usually some element of travel that happens. And so making sure I'm prepared for that. Traveling takes a lot out of me, like physically and mentally, I guess. Um, and so just making sure I have everything I need before I go on my trip or, you know, like make sure I have all my prescriptions refilled and I have inter things that I can bring with me that entertain me. Um, I have a dog, so I have to make sure that she's situated if I'm going to be out of town or something. So it's just like thinking ahead to um, how to best uh, be comfortable, you know, because a lot of times when you're traveling to you're like not super comfortable. Um, so I think that's what it is for me is just really maybe like putting some things down. I make a lot of to-do lists. <laughs> so making a to-do list ahead of time. Um, this year, my husband and I are going to host for Thanksgiving. And so we're actually going to cook a turkey <laughs> for the first time. Um, and so I've had to do a lot of research on like, how do you cook a turkey and when should I buy it and all these things. And so there is a lot of prep work that goes on. Um, but trying to have fun with it too you know just uh, I try not to get too overly um in like I'm I try not to be in so controlling um you know because things will just happen and so if you can have a good mindset um you won't be disappointed if things don't go the way that you planned yeah I think I think planning ahead is that's like the key and in, in lists especially I know for me personally if I go anywhere, not anywhere, but pretty much pretty close to a hundred percent of the time, I will literally pull up Google maps. I will look at a street view of like a, like a restaurant I'm going to, like whatever it is. And I will check to see like, is there, a, is there six stairs going into this place? Like there's also, I just actually looked, I don't know. I'll drop it in the chat as well. There's actually an app called Ahoy um, that will tell you, I don't know if, any, if anybody else here or the four, between the four of us know about this, but it will tell you. Um, essentially places are wheelchair accessible and that includes the bathrooms, um, which I've used a couple of times. Um, it, it can be hit or miss. That is a way it's, that I, you know, I plan ahead if I'm going to, again, a restaurant, a bar, whatever, whatever it is. Um, so that's, that's a big piece of it. Um, let me drop that in the chat right now before I forget. Yes. Well, thanks for the resource. And I, you know, talking about the says down here, signing small goals first. If the whole holiday season feels a little overwhelming, start small. And just a little plug, if you're not sure like what a goal is or how to set a goal, or if your goals always seem too big, we're starting a series in January called Becoming Your Personal Best One Push at a Time. Goal setting made easy. I'll put the title in the chat, but check out SBAA and um, watch out for the newsletters for more information on that. Next slide. wellness so wellness when I think about wellness I don't think of just one aspect of myself but I think of multiple aspects my physical health my mental health my relationship health um the health in all the different areas that make me me so tell me a little bit you guys how do you take care of yourselves how do you promote your own wellness I think for me, it's definitely um, prioritizing sleep and eating well. So eating well looks different for everybody, but, you know, making sure that I have a balanced menu, I'm not just, um, you know, picking up junk food. Um, I think that's really, especially during the holidays, it's just, you have access to so many like treats and unhealthy things that, again, it's all about balance, right? So, you know, making sure that, okay, if I'm going to eat like a cookie at this work party, then, you know, maybe I'll have like a lighter, um, you know, like some grilled chicken and a, a salad or something for dinner. So it's, I, I think for me, it's like, trying to find a, a good balance, um, but definitely sleep. Um, as I've gotten older, I've learned to like really prioritize that. Um, it, it's essential for my wellness. 
also, um, you know, to, to build on up what uh, Jenny said too, is is um, you know definitely uh, promote your own wellness um, in any in any way that, that you possibly can, but in any way that works for you. Um, I've read a lot of uh, different um, articles, you know, that that promote wellness. Maybe they promote healthy eating, for example. And and sometimes if you cross reference and like read too many, they can be confusing. So um, so I find you know that um, read what you want to read, but but like um in the end, do what's best for you. And it really has to work out for you because because um if it doesn't um you don't have your health, and if you don't have your health, you're not with us. Um in the full capacity that you need to be. So, so I was thinking about what you need to be is um, unapologetic about it. You know, if, if, if you need to cater to um, your own needs um, to function properly, um, there's no need to apologize for that. Um, you, you need to do what you need to do. Absolutely. So we need to live unapologetically. Um, it sort of is a way, you know, to, to be, um, to, to show that you're vigilant, you know, um, show that you're, um, unapologetic, show that you are just as committed to moving forward and contributing as 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 you possibly can. Yeah, Jay, I think that's I think that's a hundred percent spot on. I mean, it comes down to two things: your mental health and your physical health. Um, I know for me, I never wanted to go to a gym. It just felt like it'd be uncomfortable. People stare at you. You know, it, I, I just one day I just got a gym membership and I went every single day for like a year. Um, after the third day, it was like nothing. I think a lot of it is just kind of getting into the habit, getting into the routine. And especially with something like the gym, that's that's a great benefit for you. You're going to you're going to feel a lot better. I know I did in my case. And then again, that mental health aspect of of your of your wellness is just as important, if not more, sometimes. Um, so I think it's getting in touch with yourself and figuring out, you know, if you find yourself in a, in a, in a rut, you know, what's causing that, what steps can you do to, to get out of that? Um, and, and obviously again, that around the holidays, that can be, that can be exacerbated. So it's really just about identifying those things, um, and, and removing them or, you know, you know, finding a different mindset about it. So. Uh, the word that comes to my mind is grace. You know, give yourself grace. If things don't go the way you want them to, you know, you just try your best. Like I always tell my students this, that, you know, nobody can um, fault you if you're, you know, you're trying your best. And so you have to give yourself some grace. And I think there's this added pressure, um, maybe like during the holidays or even like right after the holidays, right? Like, okay, now I'm going to join that gym membership. Now I'm going to start eating healthy. I'm going to lose weight, do whatever, get more active. And we have on our slide here, you know, building yourself a ladder of wellness. So like pick one thing, pick one thing to focus on that you want to get better at. And, um, you know, kind of work your, yourself up to it um, and work within your your own means. You know, you're not competing with anybody else. Um, and so just do what feels best for you, I think is really important too. Well, and Jenny, you and I met back in the day in high school, back doing sports, right? So you guys see the personal best records coming on here. It's kind of a sport thing that Jenny and I were talking about when we were planning for this. But when you're building your ladder, just go for your own personal best records. You know, for me, my dog is a big part of my wellness. You guys just got to see her for a minute. She just excused herself. But like, how many days in a row can I take her out for a walk? How many days in a row can I spend some snuggle time with her every day? Like, and, and just little things like that and trying to do just a little bit more tomorrow, maybe than what I did the day before, especially if you're thinking about diet and exercise, you can't eat perfect every day. You can't maybe get to the gym or do your dog walk every day. But can you can you you know string a couple days together and see how many you can do, um, and then celebrate those. Celebrate it when you did a little bit more, went a little bit further, or you ate a little less sugar or whatever it was. Um, making sure you're celebrating those accomplishments. I love this. This, yeah, and this has some I was great ideas. Because I'm still uh, yeah I'm reading the chat too, and, and I love it too. Because Amy said when she goes to the gym, people will, will say like I inspire them and. Um, I know a lot of people have different feelings about that um, when we hear, oh, you're such an inspiration, right? I'm actually wearing a shirt right now. This is not on purpose, but it says stay inspired. And I always, I love wearing it because, you know, I think the beauty of it is that if we are truly inspiring somebody, 
you know, Amy said in the, again in the chat, that people are coming up saying, oh, this is so cool. I'm so inspiring to see you here. I think, I think that is a very good thing. I think that's, that's a very positive thing in it. And instead of, you know, for me, I, I used to get offended by that. I think it, I, now I love it. I, I feel great when people say that to me um, because I mean, what more, what more can you give somebody, right? And happiness and then inspiring them to go do it themselves. Um, you know, I've had people come up to me at a gas pump while I'm pumping gas into my truck saying, oh, that's so like, that's so inspiring. And yeah, I, I hope they mean that. And I hope they take that. And I hope whenever they find themselves in a rut, they can, for whatever reason, <laughs> remember that moment and, and, you know, pull themselves out of it. Um, so I just wanted to add that part. Thanks, Adam. Next slide, please. Ah, connect and service work. So we talked a little bit about traveling around connecting with family. Um, and then service work came up. So volunteer work, things that we can do to connect with others, maybe more local to us and some of the family or friends that are spread out. How do you all connect either with friends or family or through the service work you do? So Houston is a huge city and there's millions of people, but um, my husband and I, we got connected to a church. And so that becomes kind of our smaller community and they have different volunteer opportunities. Um, also working for the university, they have different volunteer days um, throughout the year. And so volunteering is like one of my favorite things to do. Um, I recently helped out at the food bank and it was really, really neat um, to see all the people working together and putting the food boxes together and stuff. So um, depending on where you live, though, right, like as Houston, there's so many different places that you can volunteer. But if you live more rural, it might be harder. But, you know, I think just like paying attention to your neighbors and saying hello to someone, you know, being kind and um, generous uh, can go a long way. Definitely. And. I think it's all about like showing yourself and and showing that you are capable. There has to be that element of surprise too, because we live in a society where people will be, you know, they 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 definitely will um will be surprised, you know, um that we are doing what we're doing and that we like like they maybe they didn't know that we could do what we do and, and be out in the community and and like volunteer and work and and be gainfully employed and make worthy contributions to society. Um, that's the other thing that we have to think about is, is that all contributions are meritorious. You know, all contributions are worthy. So my thing is, is absolutely stay active. Networking is, is definitely huge. Never stop networking because that's how you build those connections, whether they're like friends or coworkers, peers, et cetera. Um, that way you, you can share with your other friends, you can share with your family members, um, you can build that resume, that cover letter, um, uh, for like uh, later on down the line. But, but I mean, um, yes, absolutely. I, I fully agree. Um, you know, be sure to never stop networking and never stop, uh, never stop being out there and doing what you do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I, I know for me, it, it, it can be really, this part can actually be very tricky because I travel a lot and the places I go, I don't really, I don't know anybody. Um, so for me, it's, I mean, yeah, group text messages, um, you know, Facebook groups um, of people that have similar interests in you. Um, for me, I know I have, I wear this bracelet that is like, it tracks all your like exercises and stuff. Um, and it, there's one specific um, for people in wheelchairs and you can all go in and you can compare your stats for the day, how many wheelchair rotations um, you, you did, whatever it is, but it's all part of that bigger community and in a sense of belonging, which is extremely important. I think maybe we touch on that, the, that community in the next slide, maybe. Um, but yeah, it's staying, staying uh, in, a, in a group and networking. I make it a point every single day to have at least a conversation with one person in person. Um, and that's just, that's the way I do it. So, Yeah, I love that, Adam. And I think a piece of doing that is, is like, if you're at the bus stop, if you're using, um, if you're at the grocery store, or um, if, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, if you're out in public, there's people. 
Um, yeah. And I mean, this is easy for me to say. I'm pretty extroverted, so I could start a conversation with anybody anywhere. Um, but like taking that extra couple of minutes and having a conversation with the checker at the, at, you know, the local grocery store while you're in line or having having a conversation with the person in front of you in line. I've done that lately. Yeah. Too. Some of the lines have been longer lately all of a sudden because it's the holidays. And so you're there longer. Strike up a conversation with the person. In front and of it's you amazing you. what just a little interaction like that can do to you. I mean, I've, oh, yeah. Times where I've, you know, wheeled away and been like in a better mood, just a, just from a, a very brief interaction. Totally. Um, and yeah, if you're not if you're not extroverted and and don't necessarily love to to approach people and talk to people, it's even just as something as easy as a nice compliment or about the weather. I wore also had a shirt that says I skip leg day, which is hilarious, um, <laughs> and has found me in some incredibly funny and awkward um, conversations and situations, but. Um, again, that that interaction and communicating with people um, can can do a lot for your mental health for sure. I totally need that T-shirt. I love um, it. It looks like next, it. Are amazing. Next slide, please. So barriers. So in our last few minutes, we've got a slide on barriers and a slide on some resources that we're just going to leave up while we answer some questions. Um, some of the barriers, I think that. Um, we really talked about is ableism and there was a question about that in the in the Q&A and I told y'all we would talk about it more in a minute um, so you know we talked about um, in our planning meeting ableism we talked about um, finding ways to respond to that so I'm in the last like legit five minutes of of our piece of this how would you guys like to define ableism and what do you guys do to refute it, respond to it, process it? It's a really big question for five minutes, but two minutes, minute and a half a piece. I think for me, when I think of ableism, it really ties back to the environment. Like, am I in a place where I can access the same services or resources or opportunities as somebody else. And so I, I tend to see it more from like an environmental perspective, but I think to attitude, um, Jay touched on that a little bit when he said, you know, people can kind of, you know, they're like, oh, you're so cute. Or like the one that always gets me is like, oh, you must be so strong. And it's like, well, yeah, I kind of have to be, you know, like there's not really a, a good answer, but um, I always just try to approach it with like kindness and education. You know, like if, if I encounter a store that like, I have a good example of this, like there's a game stop near my house and the, the games and the stuff in there, it's all very close together. And my wheelchair doesn't fit very well through the, the aisles. And so I, I could easily get really upset and frustrated and just choose not to go to that GameStop. But I always try to see it from an educational perspective. So I'll say like, you know, it would be really great if you could expand this or move this over so that people who use chairs can can get through these aisles. And I think a lot of times it's just people are completely unaware. They're, they're not even thinking about the fact that, you know, the aisle needed to be wider. So um, it's a it's it's a fine line. You, you have to be careful because e it's easy to take offense, but I think you can take the higher road and um, put a positive spin on it and, and educate. It's a it's an opportunity for education. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, definitely agree with what uh, Jenny said, and and I'm trying to formulate a a response as well. But I mean, you know, with like with the whole education piece about it, um, that that is really powerful, really effective, um, because you know that that shows like one way that things can be m made more accessible. And um, then again, there's no one size fits all. Uh, so I think that there's that that if somebody does employ a one size fits all, oh, that's the way we've always done it. For example that could also be looked at as ableist too because because you're thinking about like one solution but not addressing many many other solutions that really could could uh exist you know and and i think ableism is 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 more like in 
and the added Putinal perspective, but also in sort of like the environmental barrier perspective, as as Jenny said too. Um, uh, it it's like what people think, um, how capable we are, or or like they fix something. They there's no there's nothing more that they could do. Well, they could brainstorm and think of more things, and so that's where like you can show your strength by by bringing to the table some more um more options more avenues more possibilities and that's where the 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 being resourceful helps too because because also being ableism it, um ableist is like seeing that maybe the person is there as a token maybe the person is there and they're not contributing so, so so how to counter that is to contribute you know to to be equally as active as those say without disabilities so i mean like like uh, contribute all the all the all that you possibly can uh and again be unapologetic about it um because i think um involvement and activity is one way to really counter it Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I have a lot to add. It's such like a a loaded topic. Um, so like I'm just going to kind of speak for myself. I know as far as ableism, I, I, very few times in my 34 years have I experienced direct um, kind of like premeditated, I guess, maybe ableism. Um, I, don't, I know I don't speak for everyone. I, I, going back to what Jenny was saying, I think a lot of the time, um, more, majority of the time, it does come from a place of of um, lack of knowledge or just lack of experience. I'm from a very, very small town in Ohio. There's not another person <laughs> with spina bifida for probably a while. You know, when I wheel into the Walmart, people are super confused, right? Uh, they've never seen somebody in a, in a wheelchair like that. Um, so instead of, you know, internalizing that and feeling like an outsider and like, you know, you don't belong here. It's okay. Well, like, what can I do to, to change their opinions to quote unquote, inspire them to feel differently about it? You know, what show them what, what can you do? You know, what, what wealth of knowledge can you share with them? What cool wheelie can you do? Whatever, you know, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, again, that's just for me. I could probably talk about that one for a while. So I will, I'll end it there. Thank you guys. You know, Jenny, Jay, and Adam talked about environment and other people, um, but ableism is something that you can always impose on yourself. Um, there's a concept called internal internalized ableism, and that's when you've grown up maybe a lot in the medical system. You've grown up a lot with folks who um, don't expect a lot of someone with a disability because they don't realize that, that people with disability can do a lot, and you start believing those things about yourself. And when you start believing some of the, the myths of ableism, let's call them, um, and, and think them as true, you start limiting what you do and what you don't do. So if you've always been told you'll never drive, well, then maybe you're not driving. Maybe you have never tried driving a car with hand controls. Maybe somebody has told you that you're just going to need to live on so off social security disability forever. Um, and so you haven't really tried to get a job, even part time. Um Maybe, you know, you're worried about taking public transportation um, and, and you know, whatever that might be or any, any other kinds of things around what people expect of people with disability. And rather than trying to see if you can do those things, you just decide not to. Um, those are examples of what, you know, in the psychology world, we call self-limiting behaviors. Um, and so... You know, there isn't an easy solution for that because it's very ingrained and we don't necessarily do it on purpose. But maybe you start asking yourself, why am I not doing these things? Um, and if you think it's maybe because of ableism, start challenging yourself to to try some of them and start small, right? Baby steps. Um, and again, maybe come to that goal setting um, series we're going to start in January um, and learn how to set goals for some of those things. We're going to talk more about ableism and how it impacts um, different areas and topics and how to set goals for those areas and topics throughout the series. So feel free, you know, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, lots of barriers. Our next slide is resources. We're just going to leave that up while we answer questions. Um, so let me know what your questions are and we will start throwing them out there.
So I think this, what Ann had put in the chat, I think that is an excellent question. Um, I don't know, I'm sure if anybody has, wants to jump on that right away. Um, Cause I, I, I don't think you can't not burn yourself out if you're constantly trying to prove yourself to others. Um, you know, a lot of times we're trying to prove ourselves to our, to ourselves. I know, I know that's a lot of the time that's what I'm doing. And it kind of goes back to those little personal goals, setting those, setting those goals that you have for yourself. Um, Cause I don't think, uh, you know, for me, again, I, I don't think, you, I don't think I would ever burn out if I, if I'm constantly setting goals and I'm reaching them, that just makes me hungry for more um, mm -hmm. and constantly trying to keep going and keep going, pushing myself further. Um, but I don't know if anybody else has anything on that. It's a good question. Yeah. I think too, like, you know, when you, when you talk about that, like you don't have to prove yourself to anybody. Like you are your, you are a unique individual. You have your own strengths and talents and anybody that tells you otherwise it's not their business. <laughs> so I think, you know, I like, I agree with what everybody has said, you know, setting goals for yourself because you want to, because it's something that you want to do, not because somebody is telling you, you know, you should do this, um, is the most important perspective to have. And that will help minimize those feelings of like, I'm not good enough. I can't do anything. Um, cause you're doing it for you. You're not doing it for somebody else. And yeah, I'll preface. Oh, go ahead, Jay. I'm definitely I agree with what Adam and Jenny said. You know, like like it it's going to eventually come naturally. It's going to come as second nature. It's not going to think of like an effort of proving yourself, um, because because you are you. You know, you 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 live your own life. Um, you're not living on somebody else's terms. Um, and I think, um, as as dark as this sounds, buckling down kind of is giving them the satisfaction. You know, um, is 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 like. It's like telling them, yes, they're right. We can't do anything. We are little, you know, and 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 so that's why like we we don't get tired because we we can't succumb to that. You know, we 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 have our own lives just like they have their own lives too. Um, and so we have to do what we do. And when we have that capability of like we we like learned new skills, we 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 got uh, further than we thought that we could. We are able to teach that you know, to anybody else, you know, so, so, um, and, you know, like, when you're thinking about that, um, everybody has that power, too, so we're just trying to be like everybody else, kind of, like, to speak on a cliche, um, I don't mean to be uh, speaking on a cliche or anything, but, you know, um, it's not so much of, like, burning myself out, it's, it, it's more of, like, um, doing what I do and living my own life, um, on my own terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So, you know, and I just want to add to that with the caveat, I am a therapist and I have done my own therapy work on and off for years now. But if you feel overwhelmed by the sense that you have to prove people, things to people or yourself, if you feel overwhelmed by ideas that you're not good enough, if you feel overwhelmed by the internalized ableism and those self-limiting behaviors, seek out some, a good therapist talk it through with someone who's not biased, who doesn't know you, who can validate your experiences and help you find new ways to think about things um, on a one-on-one -on -one individual basis. I can't speak highly enough of doing some good therapy work. Um, if those ideas and those feelings that come up for you are overwhelming, you don't have to figure it out by yourself. Absolutely not. Other questions? trying to monitor the Q and A as well as the chat. And I'm having a hard time doing both. So I don't see, hi, it's the voice from somewhere else. Um, I don't see any more questions, but the chat definitely has a few things. Um, just recently um, we had uh, Judy um, Feely mentioned that um, she wants to be the best me, not to impress anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I think when we're talking about personal best records, you're always trying to be the best you. Um, and I will add to that, the best me today may not be the same, same best me from yesterday or the next day, depending on how well I've slept, depending on whether or not I'm sick, how stressed am I, how much do I have going on? My best varies from day to day. Um, and so 
you know, I really like to check in with myself on a day to day or even moment to moment basis and ask myself, how am I doing right now? Is my best, you know, at, at my full capacity, 100 percent or is my best more like 90 percent right now um, and being OK with that? And um, another thing that um, came up in the chat was Christine uh, said that she used to volunteer before COVID at the local hospital, but since COVID um, had to let that go. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so after COVID, a lot of opportunities, you know, kind of closed. So what would you say to people if that, you know, if they're in a similar situation? You know, if, if for anyone who did volunteer work in hospitals, I like nursing homes instead. Um, nursing homes are somewhat similar. They're usually pretty darn wheelchair accessible and wheelchair friendly. Um, and the people in there aren't sick the way you might encounter in a hospital. So they're going to want you to be well if you're going to come and do visits, um, but you're not necessarily going to get as exposed to as many things. So that's been safer. Um, I don't know how many nursing homes are doing in-person visiting again, but I would imagine some of them are. I was going to suggest um, like community centers too, because they have a lot of activities for kids and seniors and they always need um, volunteers to help coordinate things. So yeah. Community centers, senior centers too. YMCA's. Yeah, and there's there's all sorts of small groups, and I know right before COVID hit, I actually joined like a men's small group. It was affiliated with a church, um, but it wasn't really religion based. We didn't really talk about that kind of stuff. It was more or less dudes who got together and would like have a beer and talk about life and just like kind of rely on each other. We meet at the church sometimes. Um, that was that was a cool thing. I know COVID killed that, but I, you know those things are coming back now that we've kind of gotten on the other side. Knock on wood, obviously, uh, of COVID. I mentioned it earlier, but the food bank is a really good place to volunteer because there's always people that need are in need, and you could even start a food drive. You know, you could start collecting food and donating it to a local shelter or center. Um, so get creative with it. You know, there's not, you're not limited. You can, you can be creative and come up with a, a new, a new thing that maybe people haven't thought of yet. That's a great point. Yeah. You can always, you know, you can start something yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, definitely invite your peers, whether they have disabilities or not, because I mean, that, that's how everybody gets exposure. That's how word spreads. That that's how, you know, people get to learn and get to understand um, so, so, you know, definitely don't be afraid of, um, spreading that word and, and letting people in. And, um, Jesus put in the chat, um, that, you know, he really has a lot going on, taking care of his own things as an adult with spina bifida, but also keeping track of, um, his wife's health who has short-term memory loss issues and end stage kidney disease. And between my stuff, he says, and between my stuff and her stuff, it's a lot. I take time where I can to relax, read a book, do puzzles, whatever it is. Recently joined a gym. Um, and also to take time for your friends, um, even just um, being on a text thread with them where you share funny, mm -hmm. relatable memes. <laughs> yeah, 100%, Jesus. Those are all really yeah. amazing ideas. I have a, a text chain with some psychology nerdy friends and we we like to trade psychology, funny memes, um, put some humor in the mental health piece. And so that's all. And thank you so much, everybody. It's been great. We loved your questions, your comments. Um, thanks for sharing your, your, your experiences. So we will see you the next time.